Game started. All right, Balderdash from the U.S. E4. Okay, let's play E5. See what? See how it goes. Ah, a uh, what's this called? I always forget this. Oh, this is the uh, Danish Gambit. And um, you can play this. You can take here. And then bring the knight out to attack the pawn. So the key move in this line, remember, well, one of them is to play uh, d4. If he plays uh, e5, you play d5, rather, hitting the bishop. Okay, he didn't do that. He went right for my sensitive uh, square on f7. So can I play uh, d5 right away? d5, bishop takes, knight takes, pawn takes. Or d5, pawn takes, and then bishop to... Uh, I think that's it. I think you, you need to give back a pawn. You're, you're already two pawns up. You don't want to be too greedy. You need to give up back a pawn to uh, solve some of your development problems here. If he pushes, then you take the bishop. That's right. This opening is called the center game when it's just e4, e5, d4. But after e takes d4 and c3, then it becomes the Danish gambit. I always have trouble with it because I confuse it with the center counter. Okay. You need to stop that pawn from moving because uh, you don't want this battery uh, Server attacking your pieces there. So I can castle. And, uh, you know, ideally I'd like to get a knight to this square, but it looks like uh, c6 is occupied. Maybe knight d7 to uh, b6. It would also cover up this pawn and liberate the bishop, which is right now tied down to the defense of the b7 pawn. A menial task for that poor bishop. So knight to b6 hits the bishop and uh, adds more pressure to the uh, d pawn here. Okay, so he can, I can take the d-pawn if I want it, um, but um, it might be better to develop another piece here. No, I can't take it anyway. Knight takes, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes. So two defenders, two attackers. So bishop to here maybe? If he gets kicked around, I can come back to uh, the square, g6. And now maybe queen to uh, e7 to e5. Uh, threatening uh, mate. <laughs> Although uh, his bishop has uh, got a nice position here on this diagonal. That's uh, one thing these gambits usually do for you. They give you these nice open... Uh, Open lines for your pieces. So let's take that. Now this bishop has been opened up onto this diagonal. Mm, no, that, that loses a piece, doesn't it? Did he, was that the only way he could retake here? Let's take a look at that. So after knight takes, yeah, the bishop was the only piece defending it. And the bishop was uh, overloaded. Huh. Should have spotted that as a immediate tactic. So definitely there's not enough here for a piece, I don't think. Well, we'll play it out and see how it goes. 
Yeah. Where does the bishop want to go? I could go here harassing the queen, but um, actually I may prefer to have it here on the king side. You don't need to play too too crazy after you've won a piece. <laughs> In fact, you want to avoid playing too crazy after you've won a piece. So that's a mate threat. Um, I could consider, okay, oh, he's moved the, uh, he's moved his queen. I was thinking playing knight to a4, hitting the queen and the bishop. But uh, now he's attacking my bishop. And uh, he's also hitting this pawn here, so I think my reply is pretty much forced. I could try defending it, but he could attack it with a pawn. So let's go here. He can double my pawns and open up the h-file, which might give him some activity. Okay, he decides to keep material on, which is probably a good idea. I'm going to put my queen here. It's defended by the knight, and it's... Um, hitting his queen, but mainly I want to get it off the back rank so I can bring a rook over and uh, alleviate some of this pressure on the um, on the e-file. I think I can meet that with the move f5. As the rook is supporting the pawn as well as the bishop and the queen. Okay, so now uh, let's bring this over. If he takes the bishop, I'll retake with the pawn. And if he takes the rook, I'll retake with the rook. And uh, he's got the bishop still pointing on this square. So I have to keep his queen. Yeah, the queen could go to that square, but um, <clears throat> it looks like this pawn is adequately defended, actually, because the uh, queen's defending. Um, queen is defending g7, so let's take here. I can then get the knight over to uh, f6 and put an end to these threats, threats to the uh, g7 pawn there. And if there's an exchange here, then I can, um, oh, I pin my rook, I pin my knight, I mean, pin my knight, and is attacking this pawn here. Yeah, let's just defend the knight. There's no pawns that can harass it, so the pin is not a big deal at the moment. Yeah, I don't think, I think he's running out of force. I don't think he really has enough here to uh, continue the attack. He, um, just kind of check trade rooks here, and um, <clears throat> if he moves away, then I get control of the uh, 
e file, and if he takes, um, I do have a loose bishop, but the queen there should be okay. And I've left defense of this pawn, but uh, the queen can't immediately. Uh, oh, that's that's a clever idea. So he started pinning this um, knight. Well, I was already pinned once. It's being pinned again. How about... Here, this threatens a checkmate. Queen e8. Just see if he's alert. Sometimes when a player is attacking, he's, he's, uh, forgets about defense. Aha, he saw that. Okay. <laughs> Just testing. So let's put the queen here and uh, try and unpin this, this uh, knight. Maybe I guess I need to move the bishop next. Bishop could go to this square. Bishop to uh, e5. Oh no, that was not that was not alert. That was uh, that pawn White was defended. Resigns. Okay, um, let's see how it goes. I, I guess I will save this as a game and uh, upload it. Uh, it was a bit of an unsound attack, but maybe there's there's a few lessons there for you guys. So uh, I'll do a post mortem on this too. See you guys later. Bye.